Hey everyone, John here from ContraBim with another ARCHICAD tutorial video. In this session, I want to cover complex profiles and different methods for producing takeoffs. Now, complex profiles are pretty cool because we can add a lot of different scopes into them, but we need to be careful with how we are producing takeoffs because it's easy to get some uh, kind of inaccurate values, especially if we're looking at lengths. And we also need to just pay attention to how we are producing the surface area takeoffs. And that's really what I wanna explore in this particular session. So here we have a wall, a beam, and a column. And I wanna just start with our wall here and just kind of go through and dissect the takeoff val values that we get when we list the wall. So uh, first things first, let's actually, uh, um, well, first of all, let's take a look at this in 3D so you can get a good idea of what we're looking at. So again, the wall, the beam, the column, they are all exactly 10 feet long. And right now the profile is exactly one foot by one foot. So very simple geometry that will help us better understand the takeoff values that we have associated with them. So, okay. So I've also set up here two simple schedules, um, one based off elements where we're just looking for all types that are complex profiles and we're excluding the column and beam segments. And then we also have one that's almost exactly the same for our component base type um, where we've got the same criteria. The only difference is we're adding in a projected component skin area, which is something unique to component base reports. And so we'll talk about that here shortly. So, okay, so let's go ahead and I wanna just start by listing just this single element of the wall onto our elemental base report here. And we can do that by selecting it in 2D and then list floor plan selection only. So here we have just our single wall. Um, we can see our quantity, our length, our surface area, and our area. Now, right, right now, these two values are exactly the same, but if we go in and we make a slight adjustment here where we say push this up six inches, save this, and if we go back to our selected elemental report, then we can see, okay, the surface area is actually based off in this case, the vertical plane of the wall, which makes sense. And our area is our projected plane here on the bottom. So, okay, so that is great. Let's, uh, let's take a look at how that same wall is now being reported on the component based listing. So we'll list the floor plan selection there and we can see, okay, yes, our surface area and our area are the same. So we're not currently getting anything here under our com projected component skin area, um, but that's one that we can specify um, in the, our actual complex profile. So let's go ahead and do that now because this is an important note when we're working with these complex profiles. So, okay, so with this, Right now, we once again, we're not getting anything listed there under our projected component area. But if we go into our components selected and we check this little option here for list component area by, you'll notice that as soon as I click this option, it creates a line in the longest plane of the, uh, of the element there. So if we save this and we go back to our component base report and we list it, list our projected there, we can now see that, okay, we, we've we drawn the line that's going to determine the projection, and we've now determined it to be the same as our surface area. So we could, of course, go in here, select this. We can actually change this by just rotating it. We save it, and we go back. And as quickly as we do that, we can adjust that so that it's now 10 feet. So, okay, so I just wanted to make that point that this projected component skin area is really important because it it really gives us a lot of flexibility for now going in and by assigning that we can really control our quantity takeoffs for our surface area when we uh, start breaking this up into a more complex shape so let's go ahead and do that now so we'll go into our profile and just for the sake of keeping this very simple let's uh Let's do this, let's bring it back down. So we're going back down to six inches. Oop. Let's bring this down six inches. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna start 
kind of carving this out here a little bit. So we'll kind of create um, a bit of a shape like this. And now I'm going to actually uncheck this option. And what I want to do is I'm going to split this. So um, actually what I'm going to do is let's cut this down a little bit more. What I'm trying to make here is kind of like just a shell. Um, this is drawn currently with stone. So let's uh, try to cut this up and be able to produce a, tur a, a surface takeoff of both these faces. So um, I'm going to uncheck that. And what I'll do is I'm going to split this right down the middle here. So we'll kind of miter these two pieces. And now what we can do is select both of them. We'll list our component skin areas. And you'll notice it draw, drew the line right down the middle of both of those. So, um, so that's pretty great. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll go back to our first floor. We can see that our column there just was updated. And let's go ahead now and reset specify our component list and see what we get. So, okay, so first thing here is we now have two walls. So what happened there? Well, um, essentially we've taken that one profile and we've broken it out into two different pieces here onto our specific component structure, which is really cool because we're now taking one, one profile and we can break it out by our components. That's the beauty of our component based reporting is it allows us to do that. If we go to our elemental based report and we list the same selection there, we'll notice that it still is one. Our 3D length is still 10 feet. Our surface area is still 10 and our area is still 10. So we're not necessarily getting the correct quantities for both of those uh, profiles there. So once again, let's go back and just compare that. So you'll notice here, again, we have, um, if we roll these up and merge them, we now have two pieces of that wall. Our total 3D length is now 20 feet because we've split these in two, and now we are counting the length of both of those pieces there. Our surface area is 20. So that automatically is picking up the surface area of both of those in this case and our projected component skin area is also 20, and our area is also 20, which is interesting. So now all three of these are exactly the same, and we are now um, really breaking that up into the different components. So let's take this one step further, and we'll actually take this element here, and let's kind of create just like a little bit of a cove. So I'm going to copy it up there, and we'll miter this one down as well. And so now we have three different components. Let's save this. We'll go back and let's list that onto, once again, we'll just test our element here first. So none of these have changed. Our length, our surface area, and our area are all still the same. But if we go back and list that onto our components, we can now see that we're starting to count this up. We have three pieces now with a total length of 30 feet, meaning that it's taking all three of these and getting the length of all three of those components, our surface area has now increased here. So um, so what if we throw in a little bit of a variation into this? So let's take this and just simply bend it. Let's see what happens to these uh, component takeoffs now when we throw in a little bit of a factor there. So let's unmerge these. So we can see these three different pieces. And okay, so our surface area, once again, is still the same for all three of those. Our area is still the same, but look at our projected component skin area. So this 1145, so that makes sense for probably the top and the bottom because now they grew a little bit because they actually um, are now rotated, which made the surface area slightly larger. But the face right here actually got slightly smaller there. Um, so it's interesting to see kind of the difference between those as we start breaking this out. And if we really want to get accurate with these different components, then you can see that the projected component skin area is going to give us a slightly more accurate quantity takeoff there. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and kind of compare this now to our other takeoffs. So we can bring all of these through. 
So we'll first check our elemental base report. So once again, we have our 3D length. Um, our wall now, our 3D length in this case is actually um, slightly longer because it's the 3D length of our line here. So if we bring this back down and let's make it straight again so that we have consistent 10 feet. There we go. So now we can see our surface area has not changed for these. For our column, it certainly did change. So, um, so that now is calculating... Um, well, what's interesting about that is it's probably calculating all those sides. So it's calculating not only the outside here, but it's also calculating, I believe, the inside as well. So it's taking into account several different planes of that one complex profile. We can see our area there has been limited to just the projection. Our surface area on our beam. So that also is now picking up the top the inside, the left side here, the inside, the bottom inside, and the bottom there. So picking up a lot of surface area here compared to our projected on our component. So let's roll these up again. And we can see, again, we're back to 30 as our component skin area, which is, again, a more, uh, a much more reliable surface area versus going back to these here. So um, so you can see here, just by adding a little bit of complexity, our surface area has really increased a lot here on these different components. Let's unmerge these for a second, and you can see that now we're getting almost 60 square feet based off all these three components. And so when we roll those up, that's really increasing our surface area there. Um, our projected component skin area is still good and our area over here is still good for um, at least for our um, our beams and our walls but the I think the lesson here is that the projected skin area is really working much better for these takeoffs specifically for our beam in our column it's just much more accurate in this case so our wall seems to be um, definitely a bit more accurate when it comes to our component base reports, but um, you can see how it's just something we need to definitely be a little bit careful of. And another note here is if we want to price this entirely by the length versus the length of each of these component areas, then we probably would opt for using our elemental based type of report where we can price them based off the true length versus using our component based report, which is going to add up the length of all three of those segments there. So we just need to be careful which one we want to use in what application. So, okay, um, I know that was kind of a lot of jumping back and forth between the elemental based reports and the component based reports, but hopefully that gives you a good idea for how we can produce these different takeoffs of complex profiles like this. And if you have any questions on this, then uh, please leave them in the comments section. If you like this type of content then uh, and you want to learn more about producing different types of takeoffs, then um, we have some online training programs. The quantity and cost estimating course, a uh, seven-week course goes into this type of detail um, and talks more about different types of assemblies as well. Um, and then uh, we also cover this type of content in our... Uh, the C5D estimating pack tutorial videos. So um, a lot of training out there, but I'll continue to produce more of these uh, free here on YouTube. And yeah, thanks for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments section and I will catch you on another video soon.